Okay, so um, as the title says, this is in the more advanced area of RGHing. It's nothing too overly complex. At first, it may look overwhelming, but the general idea is it's not really, you know, once you know what to do, where to go, how to do it, it really, you really see how easy it is. You know, when I first was going through this stuff, I was like, holy crap. But that's only because I was new to it, it was my first time, but after doing it three times, I was like, boom, 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 you know, no problem, you know, so it just looks overwhelming, but really it's not that hard, nothing to worry about. So, um, I will be giving a demonstration on how to access particular things when you first get your console and all that good shit. So, um, this is from boot up is well, where we will start and we'll go from there. Um, although mine's pretty inappropriate for the uh, <laughs> thing here, but uh, the general idea is still the same regardless of your skin on the game here. Alright, so here we go. Uh, homebrew. Dash launch. Zell launch. Xbox 360 dashboard, which will be going to this. So we just click A and we'll be able to access it. Apparently, I, uh, I'm banned, but that's no problem. Anyways, okay, so uh, once you get to the Xbox uh, dashboard from FSD dash or however you boot, you'll want to go to uh, games. Click A, go to FX menu, click A, skip the sign in, because you know you don't have to be signed in for this, which is good. All right, at this point, we'll be pressing RB. Then you will be going down to Homebrew, Dash Launch, Dash Launch. Then when you see this, you just click A. And it'll bring you here. Now, this will be uh, where you are. Launch INI is more or less leading off of. So if you don't have Xbox Neighborhood, this is where you go to change your plugins and all that good shit. <laughs> so with that said, when it comes to paths, make sure that your path is this. And do not press B unless you want to totally exit out of this and go through the whole process all over again just get back here. So, to minus this out, you go back to Paths and press A. It'll minus it back out. Do not mess with behavior. That is not for you. Network. It should look like this. That's right. Everything showing is that. And then all the rest disabled except for pin patch. So make sure um, whether or not you use Xbox Neighborhood, at least come in to, after you get your RGH, at least come into this menu this way one time and ensure that ping patch is enabled and the rest are disabled. Um, and then of course, go to plugins. And as I showed before, when it comes to the plugins, um, you know, they're all, each need a different menu or what have you set up and so if you don't have an Xbox neighborhood and you have USB you'll have to do a USB style but uh, nonetheless it's the same concept if you want to use like Modern Warfare 3 you'll have to uh, change the plugins accordingly and use destruction menu okay so say I don't want to use this or whatever or I want or they're all empty so actually I'll press uh, Y to clear this okay so now I don't have say that it's already empty I want to put the purge mod menu on okay 
So all I have to do is select this plugin, go to HDD, press A. It may take a little bit to load up, it's not freezing, don't worry. And then you go to what you have on your HDD, meaning what you put from your USB onto your HDD. Or if you just do it right from your um, USB, but nonetheless. So I want to look for the main menu that I want on it. So in this case, it's the purge. So what I want to do is click on A. Okay, now it's set as that. Now this is one of the bigger differences. Well, actually there are a lot of differences, but this is one that you have to do if you want to make it save permanently. Is after each change, you will have to do this for everything, okay? Press RB, you go to HDD, okay? And you will have to follow this button combination, X. This will save the, to the launch INI. A. This will load from the launch INI. And then B to quit. So, X, A, B. And that's all there is to it. It will reboot according, well, it won't reboot, but it will bring you back to freestyle dash, which is just fine and normal. And then, of course, if you want to check to make sure that it did, in fact, save, you just go back to the 360 dash. Skip the sign in, go to games, FX menu, press RB, go down, <laughs> go to Humble rather, dash launch, dash launch, default. Okay, and then go to plugins, and there you go, it should be saved. Permanently as such, and you have to do that for each plugin that you mess with, alright? So if you change your uh, style server, you'll have to do that, and then go and change your menu accordingly. So, like I said, it's really simple. It looks like it's complicated, but it really is not. You just gotta know what you, know, what you gotta do. And there's configurator, but of course don't mess with that. So that's the general idea of things, and again, have it look exactly like this. The only thing that should be enabled is pin patch. So that is the basic idea of what it should look like on your dash launch if you don't have Xbox neighborhood or if you do. As I said, you must visit this at least one time to ensure that everything looks right. Only advanced users do it from uh, all these changes from launch I know. And of course, just reboot, and you should be all good to go. Alright, I do hope I helped, and uh, hope you learned something new. Alrighty, um, now that we have the uh, dash launch and all that understood, now we will be exploring the Xbox 360 neighborhood. It goes as such. Alright, so when you first initially get it, it will, you know, show this and rename it to JTAG because it won't show up as this. It'll show up as like an IP address or something else. But just simply name it in capitals or like this, JTAG, and then you'll be able to access it. So then, don't go to anything else. The only thing that you need to go to is Retail Hard Drive Emulation HDD. Okay? From that point, you'll have access to all this good shit except you won't have IP ad, you know IP logs that's for ninja relations and other shit um, and this is for uh, personalized custom boot intro so mine is <laughs> mine is uh, custom then only if you have Africans this will show up eventually and you know you have access to everything that is on your RGH HDD all the good shit okay 
Uh, you'll have your I and I's, your uh, legacy. Men you'll have your menus. Everything that you have via USB that you put on there or otherwise will be here. If it's on your RGH, it will show up accordingly. Homebrew, you can launch, you know, all that good shit. And this is where, if you have Xbox Neighborhood, you can easily get to your game. So say I'm playing Grand Theft Auto, right? And I want to hop on to Modern Warfare 3 real quick. Instead of having to use uh, a game disc or go through all the different things that you would normally, all you have to do is back out, go to this folder, click on default MPXEX, and BAM! Modern Warfare 3 loads up just like that. Right from your computer to your RGH. So you can switch to a different game in seconds. But of course you'll want to reboot it for uh, purposes of, you know, switching plugins and launch INIs and all that good shit. Um, so as we go on, uh, speaking of launch INIs, this is the current one that I have. Okay, so you know this is where you would you know switch a KV out, right? So pull it out. Okay. Oh, whoops. Huh? Wow. Rather, I'll show you what I mean with the A launch I and I then. Okay, so pull this out, put it on this top. Okay, so say this is a different one. This is the, you know the one that's already in there, but say you know you go here and then you decide that you want to take this take that out and take that out and then take that out and then replace it in there and so all you want to do is run the stealth server the menu and the thing that connects your neighborhood to your RGH and all that. And then you just click on save, exit out, bring your launch I and I and drag it over to copy. It will show this, say yes to all, and then go back to Xbox neighborhood right here, right click, go to reboot, go to cold, it will reboot with your new launch I and I's, aka your new plugins and it's that simple so compare it to what we just showed before with using um, the USB style and um, FSD dash to dash launch to you know <laughs> going to plugins and then having to save each one each time you change it with the X A B combo and all that shit you can see why people have a preference for this method but um, more or less, uh, you'll have a lot of these already on if you bought from Tony Mondello. So you won't have to worry about it. But uh, Silk Road, Legacy, um, Ninja, Fake Animation, um, Enforcer, Destruction V1, things of that nature that won't be on it. Um, like I said, I've ha I've been doing this for like eight months, so I've... I ventured out to different mod menus and different things of that nature, but a lot of this stuff, you know, this, 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 you should have a KV at all times, uh, this, 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 and, and, you know, all these other filters except for this and this and this, you know, those won't be on it, but the rest of the stuff will, more or less, is what I'm getting at. You get the idea. Um, of course, like I said, you uh, can launch your games from this, which is easier. For GTA, it's simple. You just go to that. But for, gra for games such as Modern Warfare games, any Call of Duty game for that matter, you must click on that. Default MP. Default multiplayer. Do not double-click on that. Double-click on this. Double-click on that. Double, default MP. You get the point. Black Ops 2. 
default multiplayer. Do not click on that. Click on this. You get the idea. Now, personally, I've never played any other games other than Black Ops 2, Grand Theft Auto 5, Modern Warfare 3, <laughs> and of course, Ghosts here and there. You know, um, this. Outside of that, I haven't loaded up any other game because I don't have any interest in any other games. But if you're wanting to, you know, head on out and explore, play different games, whatever, so be it. That's cool. So you just bring it up, I guess, with that. So that is a short uh, showing of how this all works. Of course, I have these IP locks. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Well, you'll have to drag it onto your desktop um, to read it, though. You know, your emulations for the all that. Uh, you would have, if you do get a lot of files in this, you'll randomly just want to clear out everything in here and then reboot. Uh, that usually clears up a lot of issues as well. Freestyle, all this. You just have full access to your console from your computer. It makes life so much easier. So, uh, yeah, um, as I was showing, just like with the launch i9, so, um, say I want to switch a KV. Okay, so um, there's this KV, and uh, this one is banned. We all know that. Uh, so if I want a KV, if I want to switch a key vault to get back online, and this one is not unbanned, this one is banned. So I'm just like, well, shit, I want to get back online now. You can buy from Lorraine or uh, Instant Token, whatever. So you extract it, and you rename it to just KV. All right. It's a bin file. Good. All right. All you simply have to do to get back online is hold, drag, say yes to all. And then, of course, exit out. Go back to the where it shows this. Right click and reboot to cold. By doing this, it will reboot your console. Uh, and then it will reboot again to flash your new KV. So if it reboots twice, that's a good thing. And um, at that point in time, you will have your new KV and you'll be back online. Now, the only thing to this, though, is um, you will have to re-enter your password. Uh, so it will still have, you know, your account information and all that. But because your KV is considered a new Xbox and all that, it won't have your password stored. So you will have to remember your um, Xbox sign-in details, especially for this occasion. So have it saved in a folder or a notepad or whatever. Or if you just remember it off the top of your head, better to you. Because each KV change will require you to re-sign into your account. Vitally important to remember, because I was caught off guard because I was not told this in regards to KV changing. So remember that. With every time your console gets banned, just remember you're gonna have to re-sign into your account. So make sure you have your password at the ready after your console reboots and you launch from launch a game. So if you go to uh, GTA and then you double click on that and then it eventually prompts you to sign in and uh, so you click on your profile that you want it will say you know hey uh, we got your email here but you're gonna have to sign in with your password now and then it will you know go through its thing it'll sign you in and then you're all good then you can go right back to modding so again I do thank you for watching I hope that you learned something and that you can put it to use um, and again, this is a beginner's guide. This is not for you people that already know this shit. So, um, I hope I explain it in a way that you guys do understand and made sense to you. Again, if we already talk on Discord or Xbox, uh, 
feel free to just talk to me or so I can go into more detail if need be or explain it in a different way. Thanks for your time and enjoy your future modding. All right. So uh, you already purchased your RGH console. You have a good understanding of everything you'll need to do and all that good shit. So you know how KVs work, you know where to buy them, you know how to change them, etc, etc. Um, you know how to play the games, you know how to work the menus, all that good shit. Fantastic. Now we're on to the little bit more complex part of things. Um, as I recommended before, you should have a personal computer or desktop because it plays a vital importance in organization, KV transfers, and if you use Xbox Neighborhood, it is absolutely mandatory to have a PC or desktop. So with that said, we're going to go into a little bit more complex things of RGHing and Xbox modding. Okay, so uh, first off, you'll notice that I have KV folders uh, because I buy three at a time at max. Um, because when you buy and you extract it will show us the same. So you want to extract each KV into said folder for organization purposes and so they don't um, overwrite the other type deals. So have KVs for, uh, have a folder for each KV. You'll notice also that I have a GTA launch INI, an Africans Ninja launch, and a W uh, Modern Warfare 3 launch. You're probably wondering what the hell is that? Well, I'll explain that uh, right now. Now you see a launch I and I is what your console reads off of for boot up to plugins to everything. So when you configure it, it will modify its behavior accordingly. So, let's bring up this one, for instance. Alright, so it looks really complicated, and, you know, it's got all this stuff, but a lot of this you really won't have to worry about. Um, you know, this is recommended as the default, though. So, when you go down here, make sure you have this as your launch i Now this, now mind you, this is only for people with the Xbox Neighborhood, alright? Neighborhood, Xbox Neighborhood Guide uh, for this portion because uh, this is strictly for Xbox Neighborhood people to do. So anyways, um, here's this. Um, and you can set all these things, but obviously, you know, don't, <laughs> unless you know what you're doing. Okay, um, this is your plugin entry examples, and all that good shit, which, this is the default given by Tony Mondello, which is fine and all, but you will be changing it eventually when the time comes. Do not fucking remove this. Don't. Okay, especially if you're an Xbox neighborhood user. Never have this plugin empty. This is specifically for your stealth server. If you don't have a stealth server, you will be banned immediately. So always make sure to have an active stealth server running as plugin 2. And typed exactly like this. If you don't have it typed exactly like this, and then give the XEX name, it will not work. For a time there, I actually had, um, I did something like that, but it was for a mod menu, and I was like, why the fuck won't my mod menu work? So then I went to my launch i and I was like, maybe if I copy it like the others, HDD, that, that, and then I saved it, and then I rebooted, and then one, you know, it worked. So always make sure to have you know, it like that. So don't have, if you want purge to work, don't put it in your plugins as that. <laughs> Always have it as such. And there you go. And then of course there's all these settings, but typically you won't have to worry about this. This is mainly, honestly, this is for a quick configuration of your plugins more than anything. 
So most of this stuff you won't really have to worry about in the first place, to be honest with you. So then uh, when you're done changing your plugins and what have you, you click save and you exit out. And then of course you'll put it in your Xbox neighborhood and go from there. Reboot after every change of, um, KV, of KV and launch. Okay, next I'll be showing you Modern Warfare 3. For me personally, I have this organized where I have a launch I and I for each game because you have to change your plugins accordingly. So why not have these already out and organized accordingly? So when you want to switch to a different mod menu for a different game and you need different plugins, you can go to Xbox Neighborhood and you can just overwrite the launch I and I that's already in there and boom, reboot, and there you go. You done it in a few seconds. So anyways, for my Modern Warfare 3 launch, it's set up as such. My plugins are this. So, now you'll see the difference between this one and, say, my um, Grand Theft Auto 5 launch. It reads as such. As you can tell, these do take different plugins and different menus, etc. So, side by side. For Modern Warfare 3, I need Destruction V1 and these. For Grand Theft Auto, all I need is these two things, and then I have my two menus. So as you can tell, um, I won't have to change names or anything. I can just go to the specific launch I and I that I need and switch it out real quick and reboot, and then bam, I can get right to modding on, the, on a new and different game. So personally, that's why I do that. Um, and of course, you'll want to probably have a folder specific to your mod menu if it comes with a lot of uh, different things. So for Destruction V1, this is my menu for that. Comes with all the fun shit. Uh, CPU grabber, if you don't know how to check your own CPU and all that good shit. It comes with the destruction, or no, actually it was given to me by the uh, Destruction V1 seller. Now for my Africans Ninja launch, again this is where if you buy Ninja Stealth, you have to download what they got on the site because this specific launch I and I is designed specifically for Ninja. So if you try to use any other launch I and I, it will not work. So bring that up. It has its own, you know, coding and writing and so on and so forth. But as you can tell, there's this, this extra shit that wasn't, you know, in the other one. So it tells you all that, but you don't pay attention to it because it's already set and figured for you. And so when I'm using my Africans um, in Ninja Stealth, I have it as such that the ninja stealth obviously which has encoded into it africans and of course i have the legendary purge menu and then i have this i don't typically use the third menu because africans and purge is overpowered enough so you know that's why i specifically have an africans launch i and i specifically for this reason because you need a specific launch i and i for that Okay, and then I specifically, because I had problems when I first got this to fatal crashing, so I had, you know, a, uh, you know, so it gives you steps to do that. And then I got some uh, things to improve KV life. So you launch uh, games from neighborhood, which is the best way to go for it. You don't sign in until you launch your game. So don't sign in at FX menu or anything like that or FSD dash. Wait until the game says, hey, you should sign in if you want to save your progress. Then you sign in. You know, all these are important, vital to making your KV life last longer. So I highly recommend that you uh, follow these steps accordingly. And then uh, 
installing AKVs in the neighborhood. A little quick guide on how to do that. Installing KV bin on the dash, FSD. Of course, you'll probably have to pause and read accordingly because I'm not spending too much time on this. Okay, how to install neighborhood. Okay. This is the cracked enforcer that I was telling you about in the other video. Uh, again, I don't use that very often. I have a default MP for uh, Black Ops 2. Uh, destruction menu, alliance menu, or Celsius rather. So um, that is that little tidbit of it as well. Also, uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is a custom boot up. You'll have to do your own research on this because I am not, I shall, shall we say, confident enough to make a full explanation on how this all works. But, you know, type in custom boot, fake animation, um, and you should get all sorts of details on that. But when you do get this stuff downloaded, it'll be as such. And then jukebox. The boot animation, the evil laugh, real mod scene, etc., etc., and all that good shit. So um, that's a whole different topic of its own, right? But I just wanted to give you a quick, you know, look into how that all is for me. So um, you know, something to take into uh, mind and thought. And I do hope I helped, and if you have any other questions, um, I'll be able to answer them if you have my gamer tag or if we talk on Discord. So until then, see you later.